Okay, it's day 172. It is August 14th, Sunday, August 14th. I'm going to start with this article by the New York Times um, because this is important. Now, this was a few days ago, and everything else I show you will be today's news. And it'll explain how we got here with 500 Russian troops killed or wounded every day, according to the latest estimate by American intelligence and military officials. Russia's war effort has decelerated into a grinding slog, the official said. 500. Now, how do we get there? Let's first look at, try to explain who those troops are. So this is the Institute for the Study of War, and they do a masterful job of keeping you abreast of what's going on. And I'm going to try to unpack some things, and then I'm going to do the math on the 500, and then I'm going to show you what else is going on. So stay with me through this. And by the way, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and uh, comment. Tell me if I'm doing something better or worse or what else I could do for you. Okay, here we go. Russian and proxy troops in Ukraine are likely operating in roughly six groups of forces oriented in Kharkiv City in the northeast, Kharkiv Oblast, along the Izium Slovyansk line, and I'm going to show you these on the map, so the Severs Lusichansk area, Bakhmud, and Advika Donetsk City area, and southern Ukraine. Okay, so here's where they are on the map. Okay, Kharkiv is up in the up in the northeast. Okay. This is the Russian border. This is Kharkiv. And then if we go down here, there's uh, the Slovyansk. This is what they want next. This is Servodonetsk, Lusichansk, and this is what they what fell about a month or so ago. Here's Bakhmud. And there's another one down here that we're worried about. And then if we scroll back out, there is the Southern Defense, which is all the way over here, okay? now. There are different groups of people in each of these. So the Izium Slovansk access is increasingly manned by recently formed volunteer battalions that have likely low combat power. Let's go back up here again. The Izium Slovansk, this is what they want next. And so it's not really in as much danger because there's kind of poor poorer fighters. Wagner Group and private military, uh, private military company soldiers are in the lead of around Bakhmud, while forces drawn from Donetsk People's Republic predominate in Advika, Donetsk city area. So what are we talking about there? Okay, Bakhmud is down here, and they're making some ground. Now, I've rolled the clock back. Let me show you on the map here. This is 814. If we roll the clock back, see how, how the red is kind of descending? Okay, so here is the beginning of the month. Now watch what happens from the beginning of the month as I just let it play. 8-1, 8-2, 8-3. Now see, they're, they're steadily making some ground here. Okay, watch. They're starting, starting to pick up a little bit, but they're not quite to Bakhmud yet. See how they're, the defense lines are pushing back and it's contested? Okay, so that's what's going on in Bakhmud. Now, there's also another contended er, uh, contested area here that's important as well. While the forces drawn from the Donetsk People's Republic, now th those are people who are Ukrainians who are pro-Russian, okay? And it's a very small slice of the overall population, but there's a good enough number that they're actually fighting. Okay, the Donetsk People Republic predominate in the Advika Donetsk area. Troops from the southern military district are likely formed from the original core of forces. Okay, so now here, Let's go back and let's look at this. Here is the uh, the Donetsk area. And this actually, if we roll back the clock, it's 731, right? Let's roll back the clock and watch what's been happening over the last two weeks here. See, they're making gains, they're making gains, they're making gains. And eventually they're gonna take Pitsky as they did yesterday, apparently. Seven, eight, or eight, nine, eight, 10, eight, 11. 812, 813, 814. So they, they've already, they've just taken Pitsky. Okay. So these are more local militia driven than anything else. So that's what's going on there. And they, they did a really good job of, of unpacking who's fighting where. And I'm going to tell you why that's important to the numbers in just a moment. These dispositions suggest that Moscow is prioritizing the advance around Bakhmud and possibly towards Servesk with Russian forces while seeking to draw on the enthusiasm of NDR, that's um, the Donetsk forces, uh, on the ground as they've failed to take this ground since 2014. So that's what's going on there. Now, let's go back to this number, 
500 Russian troops killed or wounded every day. Now, these aren't just Russians. These are Russians. These are Wagner, um, which is a private military group. These are Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic. So it's a militia. It's volunteers and conscripts that they're scraping together from around the country that weren't involved on February 24th, but now we're paying them huge bonuses to come join and they get slaughtered very quickly. So um, 500 Russian troops, is, it's a legit estimate. Now, here's here's why. Let's, let's look at that. 500 times and this was a few days ago that they put out the estimate so we're on day 172 let's say 165 times 165 days equals about 82,000 okay let's just say uh, 80,000 to 85,000 is ballpark now what we know is that the US is estimated about 20,000 killed and this was this estimate was um, a few weeks ago so it, it would maybe it's more than that maybe it's 22,000 I don't know but 20,000 now if you take 20,000 and you multiply it by three there's a rule of three for for every person killed you got about three casualties let's say times three is 60 plus 20,000 equals about 80 we're about in the right place okay so that's not what the times are saying here 500 Troops killed or wounded every day is now where we should be. Okay, let's continue and look at what's going on and what's driving that. Okay, Russia's priority has been to reorient uh, units to reinforce southern Ukraine. So they're moving on the map. Let's go back to the map. Okay, they're moving their forces out of the east, which is what the, the big prize was. They pretty much took Luhansk and they're working on Donetsk. And now they're moving their forces down here to reinforce because Ukraine's going to be starting to attack from this direction okay so it's russian backed forces largely militia so that's where this is so russia can actually say you haven't killed this many of our troops that's that's kind of true but it's not i mean you've you've killed pro-russian forces but not necessarily russians so the distinction is important okay in donbass russian backed forces largely militia the self proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic have continued the attempt of the assault on northern city uh, Donetsk city um, particularly heavy fighting has focused around the village of Pitsky and we just showed you that and then uh, the Russian assault lightly aims to secure the M04 highway and the main approach to Donetsk from the west okay so that's what's going on there and that's why and so this fighting around Pitsky particularly is brutal militia are getting killed at a very high rate and so that's also inflating the numbers all right, Voice of America, major battle unfolding in Pisky. Uh, so once a suburb of Russian occupied Donetsk, and we just showed you, they it looks like Russia has taken it with both Ukraine and Russia claiming to have control over parts of the embattled settlement. Heavy fighting is also occurring in several kilometers north and Advika, and Ukrainian positions are being bombarded nonstop. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Okay, I want to turn my attention now to an article and Again, this is somewhat speculative, but I think it gives us some perspective. Um, this is the former commander of NATO, the former Supreme uh, Allied Commander James Star Stardvis said, uh, I think he's talking about Putin. I think in dark, quiet hours at two in the morning, when he wakes up, he realizes he made a mistake. Publicly, he'll never admit that. Of course, he can't. I mean, that's, that just goes against his macho, I'm a tough guy image. Putin will maintain that NATO has somehow pushed him into this corner, this conflict. Everything that's happened is Vladimir Putin's doing to include the invasion. The sanctions that have followed, the military pushback, I think he knows in his heart he'll never admit it publicly. Now, there's a little bit more. He's burning through his capability. I'd say six months from now, he's going to be in very dire straits, the former NATO leader said of Putin. On the other hand, on the other side of the battlefield, Zelensky has to recognize the patience of the West and continued flow of cash and weapons is not infinite. So both sides, the clock is ticking. Putin is running, burning through military equipment and people very quickly. But Zelensky can only hang on so long as long as he has his support from the West. I think both sides of these factors will ultimately drive the sides to come to some kind of negotiation is what he says. I don't know how that's going to play out, but the clock is ticking. And it's not just ticking for one side, it's ticking for both sides. And that's the point of that story. Okay, next, this is uh, Ben Wallace. He's the uh, the head of defense in uh, Britain. 
Wallace said that the Russian invasion of Ukraine has faltered and was starting to fail, or was starting to fail as he pledged more support. Now, this isn't news that the head of the British uh, military is saying, see, the Russians are starting to fail. Now, watch this. Think about this. They have failed so far and are likely to ever succeed in occupying Ukraine. Look, what happens if the Russians actually do win? Can, can they actually hold the country? I don't, I don't think they can. You, to occupy, you need like three or five or ten times the amount of force that you have to actually take the country. And they haven't been able to take the country. So unless they declare all-out war, I don't know that they can occupy. He added, President Putin will have gambled that come August, come a few months in, we will have already gotten bored of the conflict and the international community would have gone off in different directions. Well, today is proof of the opposite. And he's talking about pledges of finance and more help from other countries. But today, just that you're watching this right now, that you're interested, I do these daily, these updates, and that you're watching is proof that we haven't gotten bored. That's where I want to leave you today. Thank you for your time. If you're still watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow, and I'll be here.